All right, what's going on, guys? Hope you all are doing well. So today we're going to be looking at Ghostwire Tokyo. I'm going to be giving you guys some gameplay impressions, a little bit of a first review, and don't worry, literally everything covered in this video is going to be completely spoiler-free. This is just to give you a pretty much a basic understanding of what the gameplay is like in this game. And I want to give a big thank you to both Bethesda and also Tango Studios for allowing me to play this early. And real quick, apologies if my voice sounds a little bit weird in this video. I'm fighting some pretty nasty allergies, but that's not important. I want to talk about the game today. This game had already caught my eye a little bit before I had even played it. I just saw some promotional material and I really liked the way that it looked. I was just kind of genuinely interested in it. And so when I finally got to get my hands on the game, I wanted to see if that kind of aesthetic really held up in the gameplay. And as far as being like a, a, a very interesting and gripping cinematic single player experience, this does a really good job. And if you like this sort of, uh, you know, like Japanese sort of supernatural kind of vibe, this is really going to do it for you. So what exactly is going Ghostwire Tokyo. I thought it was an open world game at first, and I think a lot of people think it's open world. Technically speaking, this is an action adventure game, and again, it's exclusive for PS5. Just as a side note, after my own personal experience with the game, even though it's not technically open world, it's got a lot of very apparent open world elements. So if you like those kinds of games, but also enjoy a, a little bit more like on the rails storytelling experience, then this has a pretty good balance of both. So before you can really talk about gameplay, what is the premise of Ghostwire Tokyo? I'll just go and read this to you really quick. A massive paranormal event causes the sudden disappearance of 99% of the population, while spirits from Japanese folklore storm Tokyo. Players will harness paranormal abilities to solve the mystery of the disappearances and save the city. So with that in mind, let's talk a little bit about the actual gameplay and some of the level structure that you're going to find in Ghostwire Tokyo. So like I said, it isn't technically an open world game. This is an action adventure, but it has a lot of open world elements in terms of how you can go about doing side quests and main quests and exploring all that kind of stuff. But you are essentially a character that is like, in a sense, a, a hybrid overtaken by a phantom or, or a ghost and somebody else is relatively in control of your body. But in terms of the player, you are given paranormal paranormal abilities by this ghost and you can use these spectral abilities to fight enemies and to upgrade them as well. By default at the start of the game the wind ability that you have to fire from your hands will be your number one go-to weapon. This can either be fired in a single tap fashion or it can be held down to fire a charge shot and this is probably you want to go about it a little bit differently depending on what kinds of enemies you're facing and the different speeds they might throw at you. Pretty much every conceivable attribute in this game, everything from jumping, sprinting, uh, your actual magic from your hands, uh, even health regeneration, a lot of this stuff can be changed and utilized in a skill tree in which you essentially earn currency that you can use to upgrade these skill trees at your leisure and how you see fit. You can basically cater this to exactly your own play style as there is no number one way or like canonic way you have to play the game, I would say. Opening sequences do a really good job at getting you familiar familiar with the basic mechanics of combat and they definitely scale up as you get at least like an hour or more into the game and as you start to progress through the world you're going to find a different variety of enemies that have their own unique attacks and even different speeds that can approach you with. There's also a massive amount of weapons you're going to come across in the game not only in terms of the elements you can use that you fire from your hand but you can also obtain a bow inside the game just in case you happen to run out of magic. Now essentially the currency that this magic runs on you can see in the right side of the screen that's where the ammo counter is this runs on ether which you can see you gather by uh, picking up these sort of green triangles uh, that you can get either from taking out enemies or there are like spectral objects floating around the map that you'll see and if you break them they'll drop you a little bit of ether as well. Just under that you do have a traditional health bar that can only be replaced by consuming items or eating food and a lot of the food that you'll find in the game can be found just literally laying around as you explore the map and you go from objective to objective if you decide to explore more side quests in all likelihood you're probably going to come across more shops that are selling food and just find more scavenging around the actual town. It's pretty necessary to do this, I would say. Like, food actually comes greatly in handy, especially when you're in long, drawn-out uh, ways of combat, because the enemies, once they're pretty much locked onto you and they know where you are, they're not going to stop, so you basically have to take them out at that point. 
What you're going to find yourself doing a lot, especially as you get set up in the early game and attempt to level up your character, you're going to be going around the city and clearing these Tory gates, which are heavily guarded by these spirits and are one of the best ways to farm enemies and gather resources and materials and stuff. And especially with food, every time you eat a piece of food, it will also increase the maximum health capacity you can have. So it's definitely worth doing that and exploring the extra mile, I would say. But clearing these Tory gates is something that you pretty much need to do uh, every once in a while at least a lot of them are side quests that you don't necessarily need to interact with but you definitely should if you're given the opportunity also I did want to mention this I almost forgot but this is a little bit of a criticism I suppose and I'm not exactly sure if this is because I was playing on an early build or if there's a patch that's supposed to change this or maybe it was a setting I had wrong I'm not really sure but again obviously this was captured on PS5 so I was using a PS5 controller I did notice there was a little bit of input delay when I moved the stick around it wasn't so bad with like like pressing button inputs but it seems like the when I moved the camera there was it was a little bit behind and so it made aiming a little bit awkward in this game by no means was it a deal breaker it wasn't game breaking or anything of that nature and I know they are going to be putting out a patch actually probably today for the game that should fix a lot of that UI stuff and possibly even this input delay I don't know but I did want to mention it. it's something I did notice but after spending a little bit of time with the game, I really do feel like this is one that you can get addicted to after you get your foot in the door a little bit and start to kind of hit that gameplay loop where you're upgrading your character and, you know, the world around you is getting a little bit more difficult and so you're trying to stay up with it. Farming this XP and, like, just getting all the things and upgrading your skills exactly how you want your playstyle to be catered towards is going to be a pretty addicting gameplay loop for this and I'm actually going to be playing a little bit more of the game for sure. But yeah, I just wanted to show you guys some first impressions and talk about how my experience experience was with the game I'm definitely gonna at least complete it because this entire like aesthetic I definitely have a real soft spot for so I'm gonna finish the game and we'll see if this really still holds up all the way to the very end but I was very impressed with my initial thoughts on the game so I if you guys are end up checking out let me know but I'm gonna let you guys just watch some raw gameplay for the rest of the video I'm gonna stop talking because my voice is about to go out but anyways I hope you guys did enjoy regardless enjoy the rest of the gameplay drop a like if you guys don't mind subscribe if you're new to the channel and I will see you all in the next one take it easy and enjoy the game. これ。俺が繋ぐ。何これ。エドが作った装置だ。そこに片城を
するなだとなら渋谷中の霊を集めて邪魔してやるよ道案内の続きだ有限坂に行くぞ足りないぞエーテル結晶体で補給するんだ。強い力を